This is the story called The Little Fir Tree. A little fir tree stood by the edge of a forest, a little way off from the great green trees. It had been a windy day, the day the little fir tree was a seed, and he had blown through the air, out of the forest, and into the field. And there he had dropped to the ground. As spring and summer and autumn and winter passed by, and another spring turned green, the little seed had sprouted, taken root, and grown. Seven times the spring had come with flashy birds and flowers. Seven times the summer had droned its hot, bee-buzzing days around him. Seven autumns had whirled their falling leaves and milkweed parachutes passed his head. And now the snow fell and the grasses of the fields crackled with the diamond light of ice. His seventh winter had come. Always, the little fir tree looked over at the big fir trees in the great dark forest. He felt a little lonesome in his littleness, away from the other trees. He wished he were part of the forest, or part of something, instead of growing all alone out there, a little fir tree in a big, empty field. One day, a man came out of the forest. He carried a shovel and wore long black boots. He walked right up to the little fir tree and he gave him a shake. Not too little and not too big. Not too stiff, nor yet too limber. A beautiful little green fir tree. Just the tree for my boy to grow strong with. So, tenderly the man dug into the not quite frozen ground. He dug a big, wide hole around the little fir tree. Tenderly, he took all the far-flung roots and tied them in a gunny sack. Then he lifted the little fir tree high in the air and proudly he bore him through the forest. You are going to a great celebration, said the man, and you will be a part of it. Then, in the early spring, I will bring you back and plant you again where I found you. Each year you will return to the great celebration, and each year you will go back to your own green field in the spring. And you will grow with my little boy, who cannot come to you. You shall be his living tree. For the little boy had a lame leg. He had never been in the forest. He had never left his bed. But he listened to the trees at night, and he watched the trees beyond his window, the great green trees he saw in the distance. And he wished for a tree that would come to him. Now one was coming, born on his father's shoulders through the forest. The little fir tree was coming. The little fir tree was coming with a swish of branches and a prickly green smell. It was planted in a great wooden tub at the foot of the lame boy's bed. You have come to me from the wild green forest, said the little boy, and you are a part of my very own world. You have come to the great celebration of Christmas. The next night, candles were lit in the windows, and outside the snow fell softly and covered the trees with white. But inside the house, the little fir tree was green and pungent and warm. Then they put golden tinsel on his branches and golden bells and green icicles and silver stars and red and green and blue and purple chains of shining Christmas balls. And soon, oh! shining wonder, the little fir tree was a Christmas tree. And children came that night to sing Christmas carols. And they sang new words to an old carol that the boy had made up in the joy of the day. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your green is red.
winter, spring came in, flashing with birds and flowers, and the little fir tree was returned to the woods. Summer droned its bee-buzzing days around him, and autumn came and whirled milkweed parachutes past his head. But when snow fell still and white over the fields, heavy and silent on the forest, the time had come for the little fir tree to be carried once more to the bright lights of the celebration. And it happened. The man in long boots came and carried him back to the little lame boy. Both the boy and the tree were a little bigger, and the lights seemed even brighter. And again the children came, again they sang Christmas carols and the songs they had sung before. Again they sang the new words to the old, old tune. And they sang and they sang them to the living tree. Oh, come, little milk cows, oh, come to the winter long, the little fir tree grew in the little boy's window. Then, one gentle day, the wind blew warm and pussy willows bloomed. And the boy's father shouldered the tree and returned with him to the field at the edge of the woods. The tree was growing fast now. Little flowers had sprung up around him, making a young feathery forest at his feet. Spring warmed into summer and summer droned into the crisper sounds of autumn. Snow fell early. It fell soft and deep. The little fir tree dreamed away and waited for the time the man in black boots would come and get him. But the man did not come. More snow fell, and then it stopped snowing, and the air was vast and still and very quiet. Still the man did not come. The sun shone down, and the stars shone down, and no one came. There he was, a little fir tree in a big empty field. The big trees in the great dark forest were far away. The stars were far away. And without Christmas, the world seemed big and cold and empty. Then, in the white and snowy darkness, he heard singing, far off. He heard the Christmas carols across the frozen fields. The music grew louder, and joy of joys, it came nearer. And there, leading the band of carolers across the snow with a lantern in his hand, came the little boy. He was walking walking out to his tree near the forest. And this is the song they sang. Here we come, the wassailing among the leaves so green. Here we come, the wandering so fair to be seen. Love and joy come to you and to you. Keep you and give you a happy new year. May God give you a happy new year. They came and decked the tree with the shining splendor of tinsel and hung red berries and apples and cookies on his branches for the birds to eat. And they sang the songs they had sung before. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your greenest branches live for me. Oh. 
That was the story called The Little Fir Tree. It was written by Margaret Wise Brown, and those pictures were drawn by Barbara Cooney.